Psalms. Psalm 1, 1, 1. <clears throat> and it begins with the, the, the word that's translated in Hebrew, hallelujah. Um, but the NIV translated it, praise the Lord in English. So, praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They're established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. And to him belongs eternal praise. Let me pray for Ben as he prepares to come up. Let's pray. Father God, this psalm says with such confidence that to praise you is the way of wisdom. To praise you is the best way we can live. Lord, please, in this short time together, as we listen to the words of this psalm, as, we, as Ben leads us through it, Lord, we pray that your spirit would empower him and your spirit would enable all of us to understand what it is you want to say to us together and individually this morning. Help us as a result of spending time in this psalm to be people who praise you in our lives day by day. Lord, would you meet with us now? In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. And if you do want a question sheet, just put your hand up and I will deliver them now, okay? Thanks, Ben. Good morning. I didn't think I'd um, be able to add open air preaching to my CV, but there you go. Now, um, if you can see, does anyone recognize this? If you're under 20, you, you might not. Um, but believe it or not, um, pre-Google Maps, you actually had to read maps in a book. Um, we actually used one of these on our holiday recently. Um, well, when I say used it, we gave it to my 18-month-old daughter to keep her entertained in the car as we <laughs> drove back from the beach. So you can see that she enjoyed it at least. Um, but yeah, A to Zs did used to come in handy, uh, and might still if your 4G lets you down. And you could think of Psalm 111 um, as kind of finding your way around a certain area, um, and that area is praise. Being an acrostic as well, um, it is its very own A to Z. Uh, each of the 22 lines in the psalm is a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, so you could say that this psalm is an A to Z of praise or if you want to get all ancient Hebrew and Aleph to tour of praise. Uh, to get ready for looking at this psalm together, let's think about the word it starts with, hallelujah. Uh, as Richard said, it's translated for us as praise the Lord. Um, and this is a word, a, a phrase that we all know, we're all familiar with it. Uh, and even outside of Christian circles, uh, you'll hear them, people will know them. More often than not, though, you might hear them spoken sarcastically, as in, oh, right, I'm ready to go. Oh, hallelujah, it's about time. Um, even as Christians, is it fair to say that we really hold this word, hallelujah, this phrase, praise the Lord, with the reverence it deserves? Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Are they simply uh, words that we say when we come to church? There are lots of words and phrases that, that can roll off the tongue, aren't there? Um, Thank you for our food, Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our Father who art in heaven. And maybe we get lazy, but maybe we're just really tired sometimes. Um, perhaps today you're feeling sad uh, or you're hurting. Um, and, and so telling me to praise the Lord uh, with a hallelujah, well, I've, I've just not got it in me today. Um, don't ask me to do the impossible. Does that describe you sometimes? 
Uh, it definitely describes me sometimes. And so preaching, uh, studying this psalm really challenged me. How can I preach a call to, God, uh, to praise God if I sometimes don't feel like it? Uh, but thankfully, I've got some really good news. Uh, praising God doesn't actually rely on us and our feelings. It relies on who God is and what he has done, uh, which means that we can praise God however we feel, uh, happy or not, in whatever place that we're in. I praise the Lord, we start this psalm with. But why? Why praise the Lord? What is praise? Uh, it's a bit of a funny thing, isn't it? We, we kind of both shoo it away um, and then sort of want it as well at the same time. Oh, it was nothing, don't mention it. And as Christians in particular, we probably feel a tension uh, between the need to be humble um, and then wanting good work, maybe our good work, to be recognized. Um, there's got to be something in it then, hasn't there? Something good. There's a certain rightness to give praise where it's deserved. Now, in the Psalms, again and again, um, we're, we're called to, to praise God. So thinking about that sort of awkward relationship with praise and trying to be humble, are we saying that God is just a kind of great big glory hog? Why is it okay to ask him for praise uh, and not us? Why should we praise God like this psalm calls us to? Uh, it gives us two compelling reasons, I think. Uh, firstly, that God always deserves our praise. God is always deserving of our praise. And secondly, that Praising God is actually good for us. So if God always deserves our praise, why? Why does God always deserve our praise? I've got four reasons from this psalm. Uh, the first is that God's works are great. God has made amazing things. Um, great are the works of the Lord. They're pondered by all who delight in them. Uh, we read in verse 2. Uh, studied, sought out. That's what that word pondered gets at. Uh, and we've got a whole section of work and life devoted to pondering the works of God. Uh, we call it science. And Christian or not, uh, the wonders of nature have been studied by people for centuries. And we're still going, aren't we? There are constantly new discoveries being made. God's creation is just an endless source of wonder uh, for those curious to understand. I thought it'd be helpful to just consider a couple of wonders. So here are two plucked out at random. Um, the stars, for example. Our sun is there today. You can sort of just see it. It's huge. Um, you could fit over a million planet Earths inside the sun. But it's just one star amongst uh, many in the sky. Uh, if you look up at, on a clear night, you might see about 6,000 stars. Um, but that's just a tiny fraction of how many are out there. Um, each star sits within a galaxy, which is a massive cluster of stars, and it's estimated that there are around two trillion galaxies in the universe. If you take our own galaxy, the Milky Way, as an example, that has about 100 billion stars in it. So if you times that by the number of galaxies in the universe, uh, you, get, you get this. I wrote it down. I didn't have a long enough piece of paper, but that's two followed by 23 zeros. Anyone know the name of that number? It's called a sextillion, apparently. Uh, so, yeah, there you go, you learn a new word. There are a lot of stars in the sky. Um, from the vast to the, to the minuscule, uh, we've probably all heard of a hummingbird. Uh, as some species of hummingbird can flap their wings up to 80 times a second, and that's nearly 5,000 times a minute. Uh, it has a heartbeat of over 1,000 times a second, uh, a minute, sorry, uh, compared to you and me, who have a 60 to 100 per minute. Uh, it's so light that it can weigh less than a penny, and yet despite its smallness, uh, it, some of the species have a, a migration of around 3,000 miles uh, now, if you went uh, 3,000 miles from here, then you'd almost get to the Wixes and the Harrisons in Ethiopia uh, or the Wallaces in Nigeria. Uh, the hummingbird is actually the fastest animal on the planet. Uh, it can reach speeds up to 58 miles an hour, which is quite impressive. But when you think about how tiny it is, um, 
It means that it flies nearly 400 times its own body length every second, uh, which comparatively for its size means that it's faster than a space shuttle re-entering the atmosphere. There's not really any other response to things like that than wow, is there? Uh, you'd have to say wow to that even if you don't believe in a creator God. Uh, but if you do, uh, that God created such incredible things should fill us with awe. How incredible, how wise, how powerful is the mind and the hand behind such creations. So God's works, his creations are great. Uh, but secondly, so are his deeds, his acts, the things God does. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, verse 3 says. That God does incredible things as well as makes incredible things. And in the next few verses, we get uh, these following references. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food to those who fear him. He's shown the people the power of his works, giving them the lands of the nations. He provided redemption for his people. Now, the writer of the psalm probably has in mind here the Exodus, which is that uh, great story of how God saved the nation of Israel, um, helping them first escape from slavery in Egypt, keeping them alive through 40 years of wandering through the desert, and then driving out their enemies um, before them as they settled in their new home, their promised land. Uh, and these acts of God speak uh, of a God who isn't simply a master craftsman, um, brilliant but distant, excellent at creations, but terrible at relations, like many human geniuses. Um, the, the psalm writer is quick to, to show us that God isn't just a creator God, he's actually also a provider, a savior, a leader, a ruler of all his creation, people included. Uh, not only has he done great things for us to look at in wonder, uh, he, he's done great things for us personally to remember in wonder. So God deserves our praise because he's made amazing things. Uh, he's done amazing things. But is that really enough to not only praise God like the psalm, uh, but like the psalmist, to give our whole heart in praise to him? Plenty of people have done amazing things, haven't they? Uh, and done great deeds. They've maybe even saved other people's lives. And so we come back to that question, why does God always deserve our praise? And the answer the psalm gives us is that God will be praiseworthy forever. God will be praiseworthy forever. Um, it's funny, isn't it, that I think we often struggle to praise God, um, but on the whole, we're very quick to praise people. Uh, it seems right, doesn't it, to praise someone for all the good work that they've done, um, all the good things that they've achieved. And I, I don't think it's wrong to praise people, um, but what it definitely is, is risky. As I prepared this psalm, it, it made me think of those kind of sad cases recently where uh, well-known Christian leaders have turned out not to be the people that we thought they were. Um, and we praised them, didn't we? In particular, when one of these Christian leaders died recently, I remember seeing the outpouring of praise um, that was poured on them, uh, all that they and their ministry had achieved. Uh, and then within months, the, the same people were having to retract those statements as um, horrible allegations came to light. Uh, praising people is risky. The psalm ends with the line, to him belongs eternal praise. Uh, you could translate that as respect for God will last forever. Uh, now those Christian leaders, despite their praiseworthiness at the time, sadly they've lost the respect that they once had. But respect for God will last forever. Praising people is risky because people are not God. Uh, we're not perfect. We're changeable. Uh, we're spoiled by sin, unfortunately. But praising God is never risky because he's God, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we get verse 3 telling us that God's righteousness endures forever. Uh, in short, God is righteous forever, and therefore all he says and does is righteous forever. Uh, verses 7 and 8 expand on this. Uh, we're told uh, three things um, about uh, God's, um, God's praiseworthiness lasting forever. First, that uh, the works of God's hands are faithful and just. You could say that God's works are, are right and true, 
Uh, God doesn't lie or deceive. Everything he does is consistent with his character, faithful, just, true, and right. And secondly, everything God says is trustworthy. Uh, as well as truth, there's a faithfulness to all that God says. If God makes a promise, then he's going to keep it. If God says something's good for me, it's good for me. If he says something's bad for me, it's bad for me. Um, I can trust what God says. And then thirdly, what God says and does will last forever. They'll stand the test of time. Um, other philosophies, movements, TikTok influences. I'm not on TikTok, by the way. I just say it to sound cool. Um, <laughs> they'll come and they'll go. Um, but God's word, uh, God and his word, they'll be there forever, proven to be true, proven to be faithful, enduring until the end. God is perfect truth, faithfulness, everlastingness. Um, these are the things that sets God apart. Uh, these are the things that make him worthy for our wholehearted praise. Uh, and then fourthly and lastly, God, um, God is worthy of our praise always because his salvation promise will last forever. What those verses that we've just looked at uh, say about God and his work is especially important when we come to this, God's greatest work, his forgiveness of sin. Now, verse 5 says that God remembers his covenant forever. And verse 9, that he's ordained his covenant forever. God's covenant uh, is his promise to the nation of Israel that he'll be their God um, and, he, and they will be his people forever which is a promise that he also made to us when we put our faith in Jesus. Perhaps then the most important part of God remembering his covenant is actually forgetting, uh, forgetting our sins, forgiving them, actively not remembering them. Uh, as we look through the Bible, countless times the Israelites messed up, uh, but each time God remembers his covenant with them, his promise to them, uh, not disowning them as they deserve, but rescuing them, forgiving them, uh, per persevering with them, providing for them and loving them. He remembered his promise to them. And it's no different with me, really, uh, and you, if you've been uh, rescued by Jesus. Uh, you see, even after my own uh, sort of exodus, where God saved me from a life of sin and death, um, since then, I couldn't count the times that I've uh, messed up but like the Israelites, um, I know that God is still uh, my God, that I am still his child, uh, saved and safe, uh, because he remembers the promise that he's made to me through Jesus. Uh, this psalm then shows us that uh, if God is faithful, uh, if God is just and what he says and does lasts forever, we can be assured that God's rescue of us, his forgiveness of our sins, uh, his wiping away of our darkness and our place with him in eternity isn't going to go anywhere. It's going to last forever. I can believe what God says about it because all that he says is true. He is true. He is faithful. And his words last forever. So God is always deserving of our praise. Um, and that's a big reason why we should praise him. But secondly, um, we should also praise God because it's actually good for us. It's our duty to praise God, but actually praising God is also in our interest. It's good for us. The psalm says that uh, with praise comes wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, we read in verse 10. Now, wisdom in the Bible isn't simply knowing lots of stuff. Uh, it's about knowing uh, the best way to live about making wise decisions uh, and then acting on that, living a flourishing life. And the psalm says that the way, of wisdom, the way of praise is the way of wisdom. Praising God will actually help us to live our best life. Um, and it will help us, firstly, individually. Um, as we've followed the psalm today, we've seen how true praise of God means that I have to stop and think about God uh, and his amazing works and deeds uh, I have to remember his amazing kindness. And what that does is it, it humbles me. It puts me in my place, stops me from directing my praise and worship to uh, other places and people. Uh, it, 
it warms and softens my heart. It means that I'm awestruck by the right things. Uh, it, it makes me weep over my sin, uh, but cry with joy over God's mercy. Uh, praising God helps me on a personal, individual level. But it also helps us corporately. It's also good for us corporately. Now, I love looking at photos, um, and I love them so much because they bring back memories. And without those reminders, um, our memory quickly gets fuzzy, doesn't it? And our spiritual life is, is no different. God knows that without reminders, we're going to forget about the things that he's done. And therefore, we're going to lose sight of who he is. So as verse 4 says, he has caused his wonders to be remembered. And we have the Bible written down for, for us, all of God's amazing acts. But we also have this, uh, Sunday, our church gathering. Now you notice uh, at the beginning of the psalm, the psalm writer isn't actually by himself in his praise. What he says that he's going to do <clears throat> is praise in the assembly among the congregation. He's going to praise amongst God's people. And as he does so, he'll be reminding them of God's goodness and greatness. And that's just what we do uh, when we get together as a church community. Hearing and seeing each other, praising God together, stops us forgetting the good things that God has done in our lives. Praise isn't just between me and God. It's something that we share in together. Um, and so we meet and we praise God. Uh, and as we do, we constantly remember, remind each other uh, that God is true, that he's faithful, that he's everlasting, and so are his works. Praising God is good for us uh, corporately as well. And thirdly and lastly, um, praising God is also good for us because it reminds us of our glorious future. Um, the psalm ends with the line, to him belongs eternal praise. Um, not only do we praise God here and now, but we're actually going to praise God forever in eternity. And thinking back to that ver in verse 4, that God has caused his wonders to be remembered, just hold that in mind a second. Because have you, have you ever wondered what heaven is going to be like? Um, have you ever wondered what you'll be like in heaven? Do you think you'll remember uh, the things, the people, the places from this life? Will you still be you? Will you still feel like you? Um, or will you kind of be some kind of holy robot stuck in an endless church service going through heaven's song sheet? I'll be honest, sometimes I picture it like that. Um, and kind of glorious as it might look, it, it's not all that attractive. I, I still want to be me in heaven getting rid of all of the bad stuff, definitely, but I still want to be me. And the wonderful news is that God wants me to be me as well, uh, and he wants you to be you. Uh, and how does this psalm help us to see that? Well, thinking of those, two, those verses, that God has caused his wonders to be remembered, and that we're going to praise God forever in eternity. How can we wholeheartedly praise God uh, with some kind of holy memory wipe, uh, that's not going to happen. We're going to remember the wonders that God has done in this life, none more so than the miracle that he achieved in us, um, forgiving our sins, making us a new creation. We're going to remember the grace and the mercy that God showed us personally in this life, <clears throat> for the ways he used us for his glory, for the love that he showed us. Um, and we'll do that for eternity, remembering God, remembering all the, the good things that he's done. Uh, as I finish and the sun comes out, I hope that this psalm has helped us to see uh, that you don't have to feel happy to praise God. If you are, that's brilliant. Praise God. But you don't have to be. Uh, you don't even have to do it with a smile. Uh, you could be really struggling, but you can still praise God. Um, you could simply sit there in still quiet awe uh, at the majesty of God. That's praise. You could sit there uh, and quietly pray a simple thank you uh, to God for promising himself to you forever. That's praise. You could share with someone what God's been doing in your life. That's praise. This psalm uh, calls us to praise God because we should, because he deserves our praise, but also because it's good for us. Uh, it, it's the best way to live. And so look then at his works and how they reveal his character 
how he's fundamentally different from us and worthy of praise. Uh, remember his works, no more so than the, his forgiveness of your sin through the death of Jesus. And you'll find yourself praising him in whatever way comes naturally to you, in whatever place you're in today. Amen.